All right, guys, I'm here with the latest FSD update, 12.5.1.3, I think. Let's go ahead and test it out a bit here in San Francisco. So I'm gonna turn it on. Looks like it's pulling out. We've got some people loading a bike onto their car. It is going around them, navigating through a bus. I mean, people have no idea what a big step this is, 12.5. Most of the fleet doesn't have it yet, which is really frustrating. But the combination of the hands-free driving and the fact that it can now do most drives without any intervention, smoothly, comfortably, assertively, just like a human. I mean, this thing could pass a Turing test. If you blindfolded someone in the back seat and told them to guess whether the human is driving or the computer is driving, it'd be pretty difficult to tell the difference. All right here, we got a stop car. We got a motorcycle coming. That car's trying to park and we went around them. Very nice. You see what I'm talking about here? It's smooth, it's comfortable, it's safe but it's also assertive. It doesn't wait too long to get around the car. And look at all these Teslas, two Model 3s right there. They're all gonna be running this software. It really is just to the point where you have to drive hours to see it make a mistake, even in a pretty crazy setting like San Francisco here, where there's tons of people, scooters, bikes, cars, every obstacle you can imagine. All right, looks like this car's stopping. Let's give our car a destination. Take me to Coit Tower. All right, there we go. It's got a destination now. It's about 11 minutes away. Here we got people crossing in the intersection. We got cars, we got a bus. And it figured out how to go at just the right moment. I think the people who've been using FSD the longest will be the most surprised by this update. It just is able to do things with such a high degree of fidelity to human behavior compared to older behaviors, uh, compared to older versions. Some of the telltale signs that you are being driven by FSD are gone. It's making moves that you never expected FSD to make. So I really think this is starting to become something that every driver is going to want to have. I mean, you can literally just sit here, name any place, and it'll take you there. And you don't have to do anything except watch. And with interventions becoming so rare now, most of the time, you don't have to touch a thing. All right, we've got the green light. Very assertive there, taking off, getting to the next intersection as quickly as it could. This car in front of me is waiting for people to cross the street before it can turn right. And that's delaying me. Then there's another guy who wants to turn left. All right, so waited for all of them and then crossed. Pretty much what I would have done. Although I might have gone around that car or something maybe.
There we see a driverless Waymo on the other side of the street. You know, it's just Waymos and Teslas in San Francisco these days. They're a very high percentage of the cars. It's kind of crazy. All right, we got a stop sign here on a hill. Kind of hard to see over it. We got a pedestrian crossing the street now. Even though we're on an uphill, the car is able to see them, wait appropriately, and then continue. It seems to be getting up to speed here quickly, which is great. We do see a guy uh, loading a van on the other side of the street. So we're gonna have to go around them. And of course the car does that very smoothly and naturally, even with an oncoming car. It just did it perfectly. Better than I could have done it even, potentially. If I were doing it, it would probably be a little more dangerous than the way it executed that. Staying very close to the van, yet um, making sure to give it space while also making sure the oncoming car has space if needed. There's Koi Tower, you can see it up there. That's where we're driving to. A little white tower sticking up. One of my favorite San Francisco landmarks. I always love when I'm coming home to the city over the Bay Bridge and you can just see the city on the bay and Koi Tower kind of sticking out there. It's really beautiful. I mean, it just strikes me as such a strange thing to have in a city, but they have this tower up there. It's pretty cool. And you've got pretty great views of the bay from up there as well. All right, we're making a left turn here. It's a steep downhill. And the car gently goes over very smooth, very comfortable. It's like a professional chauffeur. Some construction happening to our right. It avoided it. All right. Next up, we're making a right turn onto Lombard Street in 0.1 miles. We got a bunch of people hanging out near the crosswalk. We got a couple of people crossing the crosswalk. And now it's clear, it's proceeding cautiously. I like how it adjusts the way it takes off. If it's in a completely empty street, the way it takes off will be quicker. If it's in a crowded area where there's pedestrians nearby in the crosswalk, then it'll be much gentler, just like a human would. Okay, this guy's parking. We're trying to go around him, but there's also an oncoming car. So we're waiting for the oncoming car to pass and now going around the car that's parking. They're parking very slowly. Again, just like what I would have done as a human. So these sort of frustrating moments where, you know, for example, in older versions of FSD, it might have gotten stuck behind the car that's parking and waited for them to finish parking before continuing. And that would probably result in you taking over and saying, screw this, let me do it myself. But now you don't have to. Now the software just does the right thing 
before you can even think to take over. All right, we got cyclists, we got pedestrians, tons of traffic here. So this was actually interesting. There were pedestrians approaching the crosswalk and it actually sped up a little bit to make sure that it cleared the crosswalk before they would enter it, which is very sophisticated. Previous versions might have stopped on the other side of the intersection and waited, you know, 30 seconds to a minute for them to completely cross the crosswalk before continuing. That was something that definitely um, was frustrating and could cause you to take over and say, screw it, let me just do it myself. But now it just does the right thing. And that means you can leave it on for the entire drive and not have to worry about little things like that. That makes the value of the system much, much higher. And means that people are more likely to pay for it. All right, this guy's pulling over. We'll continue along. We got a bunch of people crossing here. They're out of our way, we can continue. We got some more people on the side of the road there. Notice the car is driving in the middle of the road because there were pedestrians on both sides and then got back to its side of the road for the oncoming cars. All right, looks like we've reached our first destination here. Take me to the Walt Disney Family Museum. Uh, looks like we're stuck behind a Waymo, which is waiting for somebody that is parking. Got a bunch of pedestrians walking, crossing in front of us. Challenging environment, the car is waiting for them. And we're now continuing down the hill. Try a good speed selection as it goes down this hill, not driving too fast. We got kind of a bumpy road here. Right now it looks like there's a stopped car blocking the road here. Um, we're gonna have to go around it. And the car does that perfectly at just the right moment. We have a ton of pedestrians here walking. It's driving slowly, being cautious of them, yet still advancing forward. We got a car pulling out. It's continuing to be cautious. Very nice. Looks like there's a car parking up ahead. We're starting to pick up speed a little bit. And offsetting a little bit to let them park. Nice.
nice stop sign behavior there. We've got a car pulling out of a garage, it looks like. And the car is slowing down appropriately, waiting for them, taking a little too long. But that's okay, the car's patient, it doesn't get upset. the hell is this guy doing? Probably didn't realize there was someone behind him. Or he's setting the destination or something. If he had FSD, the car would just be going. All right, we're proceeding forward. One more stop sign. Now we're going to make a right turn onto Columbus Avenue. It says no right turn on red, so I guess we'll have to wait. Right, pretty crowded intersection here. We're trying to turn right, but there's other people trying to turn left. There are pedestrians trying to cross the street. So the car is creeping forward, but letting the pedestrians cross. The light is turning yellow now, and we complete our turn just in time. On older versions, FSD probably would have gotten stuck and had to wait for the next light cycle before proceeding. All right, we got someone turning left here. We're gonna to wanna to go around them. Very nice. And next, we're gonna be turning left onto Bay Street. All right, we got the green arrow. Oh man. What the hell, that was way too short. All right, we got the green arrow again. And we made it across this time, great. We've got an uphill here. Car kind of wants to go around this van, but it's not sure it really has room. We do have to make a left turn in 0.7 miles, but that's quite a ways away, so. We can continue along here. Driving over some metal plates. A lot of Teslas around here. The potential of this software, if it can 
be more reliable and safer than a human is just explosive. I mean, they'll just dominate markets like this overnight. Ah oh, man, slowing down a little too much there for that van. I think it thought it was intruding into our lane a little bit, but we could have crossed and gone ahead. Those are the kind of frustrating moments you want to avoid. This latest build has very few of them, but Sometimes they do still happen. All right, we've got to make a right up ahead. There's a cyclist in the right lane. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do here. All right, looks like we're pulling ahead of the van and the other cars and uh, turning right. FSD redeemed itself. It ended up pulling ahead of that van that slowed us down. Now I'm satisfied. All right, beautifully executed right turn there. Now it's got to go around these cars. They're making a left. But ended up just kind of waiting, which is fine. I probably would have gone around them into the other lane. All right, the road curves left pretty sharply here. And there's oncoming cars, very challenging. But the softer nails it stays right where it's supposed to be. Perfect. All right, we're driving along the water here now. We can see the Golden Gate Bridge vaguely in the distance. It's kind of covered by fog today, like it is many days. But you can see it back there. We're driving along by the water. There's people biking, walking to our right, roller skating, a bunch of boats. We got Waymos, we got Teslas, we got more Waymos. There's a growing number of robots on the road. 
software driven cars are destined to outnumber human driven cars. It's only a matter of time at this point. Next up, we're gonna go right at the roundabout on Lincoln Boulevard. That's in about 0.7 miles. Pretty crowded streets here, but no problem for the software. It's a Saturday today. Everybody's out getting some exercise. That car will be running this software. That car will be running this software. There's a Cadillac EV. There's a driverless car right there. All right, we're getting closer to the roundabout. It's about a quarter mile away. Cool, we got the green light. Looks like there's a lot of people getting off the highway, flowing into the Presidio right now for whatever reason. Pretty crowded road here. But having FSD just makes it a breeze. You don't have to worry about stop and go traffic. You just sit back and watch. There's the roundabout up ahead. Looks to be fairly crowded today. So let's see how smoothly it can cross it. It just has to make a simple right turn. But there are a lot of cars coming. Alright, pretty good. I dare the Tesla bears to count how many Teslas they see in these videos and try and do it without having a heart attack. All right, we're approaching our destination here. There's a ton of people crossing the street. Looks like there's some kind of food truck festival or something happening here today.
and here is our destination up ahead. Take me to 201 Marine Drive. So this is another location that I go to um, to uh, test out how it does with pedestrians and cyclists and everything in close proximity to each other. So let's check that out. Making a right turn. Nicely done. smoothly navigating the curves in this road. Ooh, Model 3 Performance Ultra, that thing looks sexy. We got some cyclists here on the right-hand side of the road. We're gonna wanna be cautious of them. Driving close to the yellow line to give them space while also keeping opposing traffic out of the way. Very nice. Alright, we're getting close now. To the entrance, we'll be driving up to the Golden Gate Bridge. Nice work. Smooth, natural, human-like. Like your own professional chauffeur that's in your car with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And gives you complete privacy. Here's where we're entering Fort Point. We've got a police car coming. Gave it room. All right, tons of people, tons of bikes, tons of cars here. We have to be very careful. Here we've got a jogger. 
We got some people walking, a dog. We got oncoming cars. And we're gonna have to go right in between them. The car slowing down as the gap narrows, but proceeding just like a human. We got some people on bikes over there. And the car just going around them. You notice as that guy kind of stepped out, they readjusted its trajectory to give them more room. And notice how it's not stopping, it's not getting stuck, like previous versions would sometimes do here. They'd stop and wait for people to cross. It's trying to continue forward, just like a human would. Humans don't typically stop and freeze. unless you're in a situation like this where it looks like someone's trying to get in or out of a parking spot. In this case, it looks like someone's trying to get into a parking spot maybe, or uh, wait for someone to get out. Hopefully there's a parking spot for us here. Yeah, it looks like there is. Let's see. Maybe we can get into this spot. Okay, looks like there's a car coming. Maybe there's some people crossing behind us. And a cyclist. Alright, there we go. Now let's see, we've been going for 48 minutes or 45 minutes. Let's maybe give it one final destination. Take me to Apple Chestnut Street. Alright, great, let's go. off. Tons of people walking here. Tons of cars. Huge traffic jam. A bike on our side, on our right side. More bikes. And the car is squeezing its way out. Good. We got a person walking very slowly. 
We're gonna wanna go around them. Car is being very cautious as it should be. Then we got a stopped car. Going around the cyclists, very nice. We got some more cyclists coming on the other side of the road. We're going over to the right. There's also an oncoming car. Beautifully done. We got a cyclist on our side of the road, stopping. We got oncoming cars. We've got another person that's crossing in front of us for some reason. And now that the oncoming cars are gone, we can hopefully start to go around this cyclist. Hurry up, people. Come on. So, real world driving, this is the kind of stuff that happens in the real world. It doesn't just handle ideal scenarios, it handles realistic scenarios. Alright, got to make a left turn, nicely done. A cyclist pulling out, it slowed for them, thinking they might cross the street, but they didn't. There were also some people crossing the street there. Now we're going to make a left turn. Perfect. A lot of cars coming here. Pretty tight road. So it really needs to make sure to stay within those lines as we navigate these curves here. And it does that perfectly. Setting the appropriate speed. Setting the perfect trajectory. Couldn't do it better myself. There, San Francisco.
right, we're gonna turn left here. Route us to Apple Chestnut Street. It's not really taking the route I want to take, which is annoying. Let's see, I really wanted to go here. Take me there. Like I'm trying to get it on Chestnut Street so we can see some of the uh, the driving there. It's a really busy shopping street, so I want to challenge it to cross that street and drive on it. All right, we got some people carrying the kid. Okay, we got a roundabout, there's a car crossing in front of us, there's another car crossing in front of us. Okay, perfect. Went at just the right moment, love it. There was actually another car entering the roundabout, but they were showing a blinker indicating they were exiting, so went ahead and proceeded. In previous versions of 12, it would have an error, uh, an error where it would get into this left turn lane when it actually had to turn left at the next intersection up ahead. Now that seems to be fixed. It's now going straight instead of turning left at the wrong place. All right now we're making a left turn. There's some people crossing, but they're stopping. They're saying we can go. So the car went ahead and proceeded. Now we're going to make a right turn. It was a woman with her dog in the crosswalk, about to enter, but again she motioned for us to continue, so the car continued. Prob I don't know if it's necessarily because she motioned, probably mostly because she didn't walk into the crosswalk. Alright, I'm going to end the trip now.
So that'll continue driving on Chestnut Street. All right, right away, it looks like we've got a postal truck that's stopped. It looks like the car in front of us is trying to go around it and we should go around it as well. A lot of foot traffic here, a lot of cars, a lot of people crossing the street to get to some store on the other side. Looks like we got a stop car here. We're gonna have to go around it. A lot of uh, DoorDash pickups. They just leave their car in the middle of the street and go get the food and come out. Okay, we got a person crossing the street, we got a person parking, we got oncoming cars, and it just handled it like it was normal. Right, cautiously proceeding through. Very nice. All right, that's the end of the busy part of Chestnut Street. So we've been going for, let's see, over an hour now. So over an hour of driving through San Francisco on a busy day with uh, zero interventions. So let's just close it off by driving to Palm House on Union Street. That's another busy street nearby. We'll give it one last chance to mess up doing something on a crowded street because who wants to watch a boring video where everything just works perfectly take me to palm house on union street
All right, we got some people crossing. All clear. <sighs> All right, come on, come on, cross that intersection. Yes. This version seems to be much better at handling yellow lights more naturally. The previous versions would slam their brakes anytime they saw yellow, which was not only frustrating, but was inevitably going to cause an accident with someone getting rear-ended. All right, there's Union Street up ahead. It's going to be challenging even just to turn onto Union Street at a busy time like this. So let's see. All right, we went ahead and made our right turn. And then notice how it paused because it noticed that that car was trying to go around the other car. That's some real high level thinking. It's not only thinking about you, it's thinking about what other people are going to do given what their environment entails. And there's our pin right ahead where we've asked it to pull over as soon as it can cross this intersection. craziness and here we are we're pulling over and I'll go ahead and just disengage it right there and end the video looks like it was trying to pull into the spot but because some people walking by couldn't get in there. Now it wants to circle the block and try again, but I'm just going to turn it off there. Thanks for watching, everybody.